Well, greetings viewers, voyeurs, you've got that funk. Thanks for joining me. I'd also like to thank my viewer Jack Birchell for tagging me for this video. Um, I'm about a month late uh, responding, but at least I am responding, so I hope you appreciate that, Jack. And uh, I do apologize for the uh, dearth of videos on this channel. Um, I will try to improve, I really will. Anyway, so uh, Jack def um, tagged me for the de Defining Me tag, and uh, I've got a list of questions here which I'm going to answer. And then I'm going to tag a few YouTubers at the end of my video, and in the spirit of uh, old-fashioned YouTube community participation, I hope people choose to uh, carry on with the tag and keep it going. First of all, question number one, what is the focus of your YouTube channel? Uh, well, I'm not trying to dodge the question when I say that I don't really think my YouTube channel has a focus at the moment. Uh, once upon a time, my focus was primarily entertainment and uh, offering my opinions about various social issues. And uh, I still do the uh, pining about social issues uh, when I make videos. Um, but an awful lot of the time, uh, my videos are more about me, myself, and I uh, than any other subject matter. Uh, but I wouldn't really call that the focus of my YouTube channel, although it's uh, my sort of fallback position, as it were. Uh, basically, my YouTube channel exists because I have observed occasionally throughout the last seven years conversations going on on YouTube that I wanted to be a part of and creating my YouTube channel was the means for me to participate in those conversations and um, that's something I really ought to do more often. Question number two, what hobby or hobbies do you have that you haven't shared on YouTube? Well in the seven years that I've been making videos on YouTube I've shared pretty much everything about myself that I consider to be remotely interesting. Um, I used to have a hobby that I, I, I am trying very hard not to have anymore. Uh, I used to be a hoarder. I have mentioned this in a video once before. Um, there was a period of time from about, I suppose, 2006 to 2011 uh, where I was a hoarder. I was one of those people who had, I had crap everywhere in my house that you could possibly imagine. In between things, under things, behind things. Um, I was one of these people who had a really hard time throwing away things that were clearly junk and had no useful purpose. Um, and you might not think of that as a hobby, but I don't see it as any different than a hobby. It's just not a very constructive one. Um, my main hobby uh, that I enjoy, that I don't really get to do very much, is massage. I like giving and receiving massages very much. and. Um, even though I have a, a special person in my life right now, I don't get to give as many massages as I might like. Pardon the overhead traffic. Anyway, that's what you get for living in West London, not too far from Heathrow. Right, uh, question number two, or sorry, three. Uh, what's your number one talent? Well, it's tempting to be really cheeky and say sex because I am quite a good fuck, but I don't think that's really the aim of the question. Um, my number one talent, I think, I would like to think anyway, is um, as a mediator. Um, I have very often in my life um, opted to try to bring peace to opposing factions. Uh, this would be like uh, couples in dispute or friends who are in the process of falling out and mediating between them. Um, I'm pretty good at calming people down and uh, helping people to find uh, their ease and I'm also pretty good at being fair-minded and impartial when it comes to parties who are in dispute. So I think that's a talent that I've got that I probably don't utilize these days as much as I used to um, because at the moment I surround myself with people who get along but it hasn't always been so. Anyway, it's also the sub-question, what talent do you wish you had? Uh, I wish I was a virtuoso guitarist who could also sing. Uh, unfortunately, I can't really sing very well, and that's an understatement. I sing like a cat. Uh, it's not good. And if I could sing and play guitar, I guarantee you that's what I would be doing for a living. Uh, I think being a musician is one of the nobler and more interesting uh, professions out there, but you do need to have real talent, in my opinion. Question number four. Uh, what are the three main character traits that define you? Well, you know, I, I suppose you really would have to ask other people besides me because we all tend to view ourselves uh, through rose-tinted spectacles. Um, 
And the real people to ask what defines me would be my children, my daughter and son. Um, because they know me better than anyone else in the world knows me and they would not dress it up with lots of, you know, uh, appeal to my uh, vanity. They would just give it to me straight. So if you're asking me what my own impressions of myself are about three main character traits that define me, it's, uh, you know, I'm pretty kind. I'm almost universally kind to, to everybody. Um, and I have to say, I guess that's a defining characteristic because it's one that I put an awful lot of value on and it's something I make a great effort to uh, maintain. Um, and I'm kind to people whether I know them very well or not, generally speaking. And uh, so, yeah, that's that, that, I suppose that defines me to a certain degree. Um, I'm talkative. I'm very talkative. I've got an opinion about almost everything, and I am more than happy to share it with anybody who's willing to listen. Um, and I have uh, a certain amount of insecurity uh, as a human being. I think everybody has their insecurities, and I've certainly got mine. And unfortunately for me, my insecurities go some ways towards defining me insofar as they proscribe for me, whether I want them to or not, uh, certain behaviors or certain things that I will resist doing. Um, so they have an awful lot to do with why I do or don't do certain things. So I think if I was being honest and uh, trying not to be too sort of, you know, look at myself through rose-tinted spectacles, I would say, yeah, um, my insecurities define me an awful lot. What are my insecurities? That's for me to know and for you to wonder about. Next question, what do you do to relax and have fun? And well, mostly I used to go dancing a lot to uh, have fun and I wish I went dancing more often. There's really no excuse for me not going more often. There's an incredible nightlife to be uh, exploited in London. And, uh, but I prefer dancing uh, in a, in a very animated way. I, I really want to let my hair down and, and, and let myself go, as it were. And you can only do that in a certain kind of atmosphere. And finding places to go where that atmosphere exists isn't always necessarily very easy, especially, believe it or not, in a big city like London. But I do uh, enjoy dancing very much. As far as relaxation goes, I like to... Uh, I literally, I just relax. I will lay under the sunshine maybe not even listening to music, just lay under the sunshine and soak up the rays for hours at a time. Um, so, like, that's what I would call pure relaxation. Um, I think that's pretty much all I can come up with for answer to that question. Next question is, do you have pets, and if so, what are their names? Well, when I first started my YouTube channel, I had two dogs and a cat, but um, unfortunately, I haven't got them anymore. Uh, my dogs were called Buster and Murphy, and my cat was called Vaisha. And Vaisha is a name of, uh, used to be a, uh, a friend of mine on Live Journal. That was her screen name. And she got that screen name because that was her dancer's name when she was an erotic dancer. And uh, she and I were quite close, and uh, she sort of represented uh, my sort of ideal of uh, femininity. And uh, so I gave that name to my cat because my cat was a girl. Next question is, who is your celebrity crush? Well, ever since I was about 17 years old, I've had a crush on Susan Sarandon. And uh, even though Susan Sarandon is pushing 70 at the moment, uh, I would definitely still tap that. Um, I think she's beautiful. I think she uh, just has a presence about her, which I, I find mesmerizing. Um, and she's obviously very smart as well. And I just think she seems like a very passionate, person and uh, I, I just think wow every time I see her I think wow you are amazing and that's been the case since the late 1970s so yeah I've had a crush for a long time if you want me to pick someone of a sort of more younger age group I'm afraid I have a hard time with that um, not because I think there's anything wrong with older men uh, fancying younger women it's just that in terms of celebrities I actually can't think of any younger celebrity women that are really fancy I mean, I can appreciate them as beautiful women, but fancy them, as in, would want to be with them? I can't think of any, not really. Right, uh, next question is, other than your family, um, 
Who are your role models? Well, I think it's pretty well established on my channel that uh, Prince has been a major influence on my life. And when he died earlier this year, I was absolutely gutted. And since he died in April, I have probably about 80 or 90% of all the music I've listened to voluntarily has been Prince. Um, I didn't necessarily even think of Prince as a role model until after he died and I realized just what an influence he was on my life. I mean, I was aware that he was an influence on my life, but I didn't necessarily think of it in terms of role model. But I guess if I'm being honest and looking at the term for what people usually mean by it, yeah, he was a role model to me. I looked up to the man and he helped me sort of find my strength to be the guy I wanted to be. So uh, Prince would definitely be that my celebrity role model, David Bowie after that. And in terms of people that I know in real life, I'm probably thinking more about my best friend Berkeley's mother. 20 or so years ago, when she was the age that I am now, 54, she bought a boat uh, in California where I grew up. And she decided to get away from it all. And she sailed down the southern coast of California, down into Mexico. Then she turned right headed across the Pacific, went all the way around Australia, spent three years living in Malaysia in a port for a while, and she took off again, went across the Indian Ocean, Madagascar, down around the um, uh, Horn of Africa, across the Atlantic, and the boat finally gave up after 14 years, uh, just off the coast of Honduras. So she very nearly circumnavigated the globe and for the vast majority of those 14 years she was by herself on that boat and that takes a certain kind of personality uh, it takes a certain kind of confidence i mean if it's just you and the big blue and that's all you can see you've got to be pretty okay with yourself you've got to be in a good place you've got to be confident of your abilities for sure and happy in your own company and I, I, I just really admire the hell out of what she accomplished. She came back oh about I suppose six six or seven years ago um, but she couldn't stand being a landlubber and she bought another boat and has taken off again and I have no doubt that uh, you know she's well into her 70s now so I have no doubt that she intends to die at sea um, and I just I just love the fact that she's doing life her way and that even when she was 54 it was never too late to sort of start over again from scratch and do something completely different something completely unexpected and she made the most of it and i think there's an awful lot that we can all learn from people like her last uh question on my list is do you have a joke or a funny story that you like to tell well um I have told loads of funny stories on my YouTube channel and jokes as well and uh, none of them are any better I don't know anything better uh, to elaborate with now um, one of my YouTube videos that I did in my first year as a youtuber was called the worst joke ever told on YouTube type it in the search bar and look it up it'll come up it's pretty bad but I love telling it um, I managed to tell the joke in that video in less than 11 minutes because that used to be the um, time constraint on a YouTube video uh, however I can drag that joke out to approximately 25 or 30 minutes um, the person who told it to me called it a shaggy dog joke and a shaggy dog joke is a joke that is intended to go on a long time and then have a punchline at the end that makes you want to roll your eyes and kill the person who wasted all your time telling you the long joke because the punchline is like so bad anyway um, so yeah if you're interested you can look that up I've also told some pretty funny stories about my own life uh, skeletons be free you can look up that video if you want to that's actually quite a funny video um, other other funny videos uh, about stories about my life I I tell the story about how I lost my virginity that's called uh, losing my cherry and crushing my cherry two videos you've got to watch them both um, it's it's funny in a bittersweet sort of way it's funny because um, it's not happening to you it's the kind of thing that uh, you think really Did, yeah really it really happened to me um, so yeah, I've got loads of funny stories that I'd like to tell, but I've already told them and I don't really want to belabor the point or try to pick a favorite here. But if you really, really, really want to prize some out of me, I'll give you some more titles to look at um, in the comment section down below if you really want to ask. Alright, I want to thank Jack for tagging me for this video. I'm going to tag 
three YouTubers, and I hope very much that you all choose to take up the tag. I'm going to tag Agent of Doubt, Kazoom Fowler, and Laura Lila. Thanks for watching this video, and until next time, may all your ups and downs be ups.